and welcome to another video. As you can see, we're in our bathroom location. Um, it's rounding up to the end of semester, so you know the African and German people they're trying to make sure that this performance is airtight. So my man is banging his absolute heart out on the drums, and I couldn't really hear myself talking at a regular location, so I, I had to occupy this area for the time being, which is it's cool. I'm excited to see what they have in store for for their African dance performance. But um, talking about last week's video, first and foremost, thank y'all so much. I got a lot of great feedback from that video. Y'all seem to really enjoy when I actually go into my actual listings and how I lift outside of like when I'm doing these randy like planned YouTube videos, how I would regularly live throughout the week. And y'all really do seem to enjoy when I post shorts of me doing max lifts. Um, during the high, my hypertrophy or my, my um, bulking um, season, I tend to do the max lifts for like cleans, deadlifts, and squats. I plan on going home next week, so we don't have any like um, like squat racks that aren't Smith machines. So when I get home next weekend, that's when I'll actually do my squat um, max to see where I'm at. I'm anticipating it'll be around 300, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, y'all really seem to enjoy that. I appreciate the feedback on that. and. I'll, ten, I'll incorporate more of those and then I'll do some kind of like workout lifting sessions with how other people lift and how I, it compares to how I lift because y'all seem to enjoy those as well. Um, now talking about the thing, I think y'all can probably see on my right leg. I did say I was going to get a tattoo for my birthday that is tomorrow or maybe if you're watching it on Tuesday, it's today. Um, I did get the tattoo. I'll probably post the video at the end of the intro, but this is it. I mean, I'm not gonna like strain my leg trying to show y'all because y'all seen the video. It was cool. It only took about, I started at 11, ended at four. It wasn't that long. My forearm took significantly longer than that. And as for pain, did I feel it? Yes, but I have a pretty high pain tolerance. So it was like, yeah, I felt it, but I was also asleep for like 90% of it. So like that part didn't really affect me. The part that sucks the most for me really is the itching because the itching is like, it's intense. Especially if you have a bigger tattoo, the itching sucks. So not looking forward to that. But let's get into the series finale of the superhero training video routine, whatever you want to call it. So if you have a brother, a male cousin, maybe a father, an uncle, a boyfriend, a male best friend, whatever, you know that the new Spider-Man game was just released this Friday. And in honor of that, I decided that we'd do the series finale on Spider-Man. Now, I know what y'all thinking. Do we that Spider-Man has superpowers? Yes, technically, he does have superpowers. But out of all the superheroes that have superpowers, I think he kind of relies more on his athletic ability the most out of um, all the superheroes. You know, he can't really do all those slips and all those moves without being more mobile right now Captain America and things like that yes he he also fights but he kind of relies more on his strength um Spider-Man kind of relies more on his uh his mobility and his flexibility so that's why we're ending it off Spider-Man um I'm really excited for this one and without any further ado let's get into the video All right, now starting off with these um, resistance band lat pull downs. If you can kind of see, you can kind of notice I'm poking my chest out a bit. When I'm doing lat pull downs as well, I'm also poking my chest out a bit because when I'm, um, the, the bar should hit basically my lower chest area when I'm finished with, uh, with one rep and then going all the way, all the way back up. So it should hit my chest. I'll pause for a moment, maybe one or two seconds, hold it, and then I'll keep going. Now with the bicep curls, I've said this in previous videos before, there are three different planes in which you can get a certain amount of core engagement. When you're laying down, you kind of get the least amount. Sitting, sitting, you get a little bit more, and then you get the most when you're standing. Now, the only time I wouldn't recommend somebody start 
uh, exercise laying down if it's possible it's kind of hard to do bicep curls laying down but any exercise that's possible to start um supine on your back laying down or even like laying down on, on your front side um is overweight clients because of the the difficulty it might be for them to get up so for them it would just be easier to uh start stuff sitting down recommended uh, especially since they'll probably be doing more machines or even standing up as well as long as um the machine is taking up a large amount of that that core work out of their hands with the overhead squats um actually these are the type of squats that if you are a personal trainer and you are doing a performance assessment to see maybe somebody's lower bottom body uh, mobility and endurance even this is what uh, they recommend you have them do overhead squats because you can quite kind of see it quite a bit from them uh, if they lean forward how low they can go um you know and how their how their form is so this is like one of the the best ways to to gain information on somebody's lower body lower body mobility Finishing off with stir the pot. I actually got this um, exercise from LeBron James. I don't know if anybody has ever actually watched LeBron James' workouts. I watch a lot of different athletes work out um, just so I can kind of get inspiration for how I want to add to my workouts. And his core work is probably one of the best I've ever seen. Um, he's done a lot of crazy things, and like mainly it's because of his... Uh, exceptional uh, core strength so I took this one from him and I've been using it ever since so first question is a fitness question how should I breathe when I work out um the best way how I breathe when I work out let's say is let's say for some reason I'm doing bench press even though I never do when I'm going down I will breathe in, and then when I'm pushing up back up, I will breathe out. Some people do what's known as a valve maneuver, which is when they basically hold their breath throughout the entire set. And you may get be able to get like a, a, a nice little pump and a little bit more strength with that, but in the long run, it can cause some heart issues and stuff like that. So it's not really recommended to continually do, but that's not how I breathe. I breathe the in and out, so... That's how I breathe, and sometimes if I absolutely need to push through a set, I'll, I will do a valve maneuver, but not constantly. Next question is, what do people idolize that you think they shouldn't? To be honest, I don't believe people should idolize anything. I'm a firm believer in God, and there are many scriptures in the Bible that go on about um, the dangers of idolization. To name one, 1 John 5.21. Dear children, um, put no idols before me or keep idols from you. Um, that's like one of the many scriptures to talk about the dangers of idolization. But in terms of specifics, I think the be the beehive is like intense. Like I love Beyonce too, but like they be ready and willing to like hurt people over accusations that really aren't true at most times. So like stuff like that kind of. Kind of scares me a bit, but yeah, idolization as a whole is not something that I think should be uh, smiled upon. Next question is kind of fitness related as well. How do I feel about a high protein diet? Now, a high protein diet is kind of frowned upon because um, there's a lot of fats that come with um, meat, especially red meat. But depending on your metabolism, and how much how much activity you're actually doing, how much vigorous activity you're doing. There are studies that show um, eating a higher protein diet, maybe making the protein 20% of your diet um, will not really have any um, horrible effects or uh, make, it, make you any sicker or uh, unhealthier than if you were having a low protein diet. Um, because if you're working out vigorously enough, that red, that the fat from that red meat will burn off. And if your metabolism is fast enough, but, um, 
eating a high protein diet doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be stronger um there are the study also shows like that even if you eat a high protein diet then somebody you will have uh more muscle like you'll be a uh, fuller but you won't be any more or less stronger than that person so i'm not uh against it but it really doesn't have any benefits in terms of actual strength Final question of the day is what conspiracy theory do I actually believe? I'm really glad this was brought up because this has been sitting in my heart for a minute now. You know, people don't talk about it, but me being not necessarily from the like in depths of Atlanta, but growing up around Atlanta, I picked up on the signs, I've seen the hints, I've seen the clues, and I know that Gucci Man is a clone. That's right, I said it, Gucci Man is a clone. Let's think about it. Let's think about it for a second, shall we? He comes back from prison, right? One, I mean, he's in great shape. Like, I, I mean, you might count that for, like, he really worked out and lost the weight, but I'm guessing they're not giving him five-star meals in prison. He was the most disloyal dude when he was in prison, comes out, loyal as can be. And last but not least, his newer music has really been trash. Trash. It's absolutely trash. Now, you might credit to that to the fact that he doesn't drink or smoke anymore. Maybe that was that helped him get in the right mindset to make the trap music. But his new music has been trash. So, in conclusion, Gucci Man is a clone. That is a conspiracy theory that I 100% believe. All right, y'all, so that was the video for today. Um, it wasn't like a, a terrible workout. Like, it more challenged my core than it being difficult. It, like, it challenged my core, but it wasn't an exhausting workout. Um, like, it, it's kind of hard to, to, to beat the Green Arrow workout. I mean, that one by far was my absolute favorite one, and it challenged me the most. So that one was probably, the out of all of them I did, Green Arrow was the best, and Nightwing was definitely the worst and most ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, this is the, the last uh, last episode of the superhero training series. Um, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I hope y'all enjoyed it too. Please put some suggestions for, for what I should do, what series I should do next. I kind of have an idea of what I might probably do next. But if you guys have suggestions for what you want to see, then I'll be glad to take them and um, and do those because you know these videos are for you, for you guys as well. Um, and on another note, I haven't done the voiceovers, obviously, right now as I'm recording the, the ending, the outro or the ending of this uh, video, but I'm going to start adding in questions like fitness, fitness questions and like Q&As as well. Um, so, you know, this can be more of getting to understand me as a trainer and also how I put things in perspective in the fitness industry. I never want you guys to just take my word for stuff. And I, when I say that, it doesn't mean that I'm not an intelligent individual. I like to think of myself as an intelligent individual. But there are intelligent individuals who will go based off of feelings. So whatever I say, if, uh, if I end up saying something that uh, maybe you're skeptical about and you don't know if it's necessarily true, I'm going to get in the habit of putting all the academic journals and everything that I put, put, pull from in the descriptions so that you guys can see what data and stuff I'm pulling from. Because I promise you, I'll never just go off what I feel. I'll always tell you this is based off an academic journal, or if I'm saying something, it's based off evidence, and then it'll be in a link in, in the um, link in the in my description as well, so you guys can actually look for yourselves and see and study. Because the main concept of this of this whole channel is for people to understand their bodies and how they work, not just take my word for it. My body may work differently than yours and understanding your body may, may, may work differently than mine. So that's why I'm going to try and get in the habit of putting um, those academic journals in my description so you guys can look and see the data for yourself instead of just taking my word for it because that's never what I want you to do. I don't want you to take anybody's word for it, especially in the fitness industry. There's a lot of people putting false information out there. 
Um, so yeah, that's the video for today. I hope y'all thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, if y'all wondering, Khalil, oh my God, your birthday is tomorrow, right? What can I do? What can I give you for your birthday? Materialistic things don't matter unless you're my parents or a puppy. Okay. But if, if you guys are just like YouTube subscribers, uh, then or YouTube watching my video, a sub and a like mean the world to me, or a share, or even a comment. You know, just spreading the word on the channel, that would mean the world to me. Like I said, if you're my parents, I want a puppy, everybody else, like, comment, subscribe. That's all I ever I'd ever ask for you guys. Um, I appreciate all the support I've gotten so far, and I will see y'all next week.